sense when the warden says sit down, everyone sits down. So I was very impressed. <laughs> Becky was my t-ball coach when I was a kid. She doesn't want to tell that story. She might sound a little bit older. She was like two years older. So. <laughs> uh, well, thank you all for, for coming out in the middle of your day. And, and uh, I know uh, Meg really uh, appreciates the opportunity. Probably not so much to, as we've traveled around Northwest Oklahoma today, it's not been so much about him speaking. It's been a lot of listening. And you know, one of the issues that are important to us in, in rural Oklahoma and how they're different than in Tulsa or Oklahoma City. And uh, I think it's been, a, it's been a good day to, to, uh, to learn more about those things. And, uh, he doesn't need any introduction from me. I mean, we've, we've all known him a, a long, long time because we used to watch him on television. And we were in the Oklahoma City TV market. So uh, Mick was our sportscaster and then news for several years. And, and so he's, uh, he's had kind of a front row seat to uh, a lot of events in the state that we're serving a great role with great leadership in, in Oklahoma City bringing an NBA team to Oklahoma City and continuing the, the MAPS progress. And, and so I think he's here today to announce a new MAPS project for Woods County. I'm not completely sure. <laughs> no, I, and I, I think that's uh, that's where as the selection has moved forward and, and uh, the more that you, you, you talk to, uh, to Mick, it's, uh, how do we translate those successes across the state? And uh, how do we make those things happen? How do we have a MAPS for the entire state of Oklahoma? Uh, you know, just, a leader with that type of vision, uh, we can we can do things a little bit bigger than what we give ourselves credit for and we think we can do and how do we do that and, and I think that's what uh, what Mick is, uh, is offering with this campaign and so I'm really excited that he was willing to come out and, and uh, spend another day, it's not his first time by any means, but spend another day in Northwest Oklahoma and, and to, uh, to see more about what's going on here and what our challenges are and, and, uh, and how the state can help. So, Mr. Mayor, welcome to Alva again. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Well, first of all, thank you for what you all are doing. Um, and you know, let me introduce my wife, Terry. Terry's from Vanita originally, and uh, she's uh, been my partner for this 14 months uh, of a campaign. And uh, it, you know, to a certain extent, because you know, people are asking, what's that like? You're out there every day. It's kind of like we finished a marathon, and they tell you that you won, and now line up and run a 440. I mean, so, you know, you thought it was a very, you know, um, uh, busy day during those 13 months, and now it's only uh, quick in the pace. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we've enjoyed doing is getting around and meeting people, and, and I feel like because I've never run statewide, uh, even though as a, as a broadcaster and as the mayor, I, I travel throughout the state, but, you know, it's, it's different when you're a candidate. And I, I feel an obligation to get out and meet people, as, as many people as I can. I mean, I, I think that's on me. Um, no, I mean, no one owes me anything. They don't owe me their vote, and I got to go out and earn it. And uh, and that's what I've been trying to do: to go out and talk and and uh, talk about my priorities and my vision for the state, uh, but also looking for success stories that we can emulate. And, and I've actually mentioned Alba a few times when I've I've talked about you know some of the some of the interesting things about the state of Oklahoma is that we have these pockets of success. And it's in a lot of different areas, and one of them is, is sort of municipalities. And I've noticed this, this sort of sweet spot that Alba falls into, uh, along with Miami, Okmulgee, um, Weatherford, um, medium-sized cities um, that have a strong economy um, and, and some sort of, a, of an ability to attract highly educated 20-somethings. And usually, at least in the four examples I just gave, have a university component. And so I don't think that's becoming a coincidence. I think when you start seeing towns of similar size, they're having similar success, uh, it involves a university component and strong private sector leadership. Now, these towns have good mayors too, um, but the, the common denominator is that private sector leadership. And one thing I've noticed as the, the municipal leader of the largest city in the state is just how the relationship with the state has just not gotten better through time. Um, and, you know, when I, when I travel around the state, I'm, I'm constantly, I guess, you know, just through training, I'm looking at, at small towns or, or medium-sized cities, I'm looking at it almost through a mayor's eyes about knowing the challenges of trying to fund our local governments through a, a sales tax heavy funding model, um, knowing that just uh, how, how challenging it can be in a day when 
more people are buying things on the internet, and fewer dollars are coming into the sales tax, and Main Street in, it's challenged to try and stay viable. So <clears throat> there are a lot of, of issues that are that are facing municipal government all over the state. But what I <clears throat> intend to create is a different paradigm where at the state level, and specifically the governor's office, that state government embraces the challenges of small towns and medium-sized towns and tries to help gather the resources where the private sector uh, involvement in smaller communities can actually be a part of a success story. That state government can not only be a partner, but be a critical role in trying to make sure that rural Oklahoma stays as viable and as meaningful as we all want it to. Um, one of the realities is that the, the world is changing really fast. And I was you know, talking to Jeff on the way over here. I said, you know, if you think back, you know, to our ancestors, say a thousand years ago, I don't think their lives changed. You know, from the, you know the way it was when they were born and the when when they died. Their life, everything stayed pretty much the same. The weather was probably an issue, but their life, you know, ultimately didn't change. The economy and, and all of the things that, that are around them. But we're in an age now where things are changing dramatically, quickly, um, and generally in ways that involve you know, less labor-intensive uses on farms, more technology more expensive technology you know, to, to run our economy. Um, more people buying things on the internet, making it more of a challenge for a local retailer. I mean, all of these forces are at play. I don't think any of us think that they're going to you know, go away. But how do we embrace them and how do we use that going forward as a guide uh, for creating viable opportunities in the state? Um, so, Terry and I do a lot of listening and, uh, and a lot of emotions out there. Anywhere from mildly disappointed in, in state government to downright anger about the last few legislative sessions and how overly partisan they have seen from the outside. And, you know, I, I got into this race uh, when I decided not to run for a fifth term as the mayor of Oklahoma City uh, at the urging of the business community who was looking for a problem solver, a consensus builder, and somebody who can get things done at, in the executive branch. Um, and so I have spent the last year plus um, sorting through the opportunities and learning more about the state and all the different levels of state government and the, the bureaucracies that are out there, and the constitution that's that's uh, frequently troublesome. I mean, there, there's no shortage of challenges. Um, but, you know, then I come to a community like Alba that not only um, deals with their challenges, but embraces the challenges. I mean, and, and puts their arms around challenges. Um, one, the one common denominator that I see everywhere in the state is that we care about each other. And we really do. There's nothing phony about it. Oklahomans care about each other. And that's a strength that we've got to be able to build on. Um, when you look forward at, at really tough issues like, like health care, government is not going to meet the expectations of the baby boom generation. Uh, the math just doesn't work. And so we're going to have to be better job of taking care of each other um, and dealing with the ever-present change that's taking place in our community. Um, and when I take a step back and I, I look at the state with open eyes and I say, why is it that Oklahoma can't seem to have that, that long-term growing economy? What's wrong with the trajectory of our economy? Why, why, what is holding us back? To me, it is that we've had ever lower and lower standards in health and education. And it plays out into our criminal justice system. It plays out into our, our social issues. And, and ultimately, that plays into our economy. And I, I think we've also become accustomed of judging our governors by what they do on policy during the legislative session. And that's an important part of it. But to me, the most important thing, the most important role that governor is to control the narrative and set the tone for the entire state on what's truly important. And that's the higher standards for ourselves in health and education. Until we address the fact that we have too many people that are unhealthy and too many people that are undereducated, we're always going to struggle economically. And so, you know, a lot of times a, a prospective voter will want to know about a certain policy opinion, and I can give that. But I try to caution people, that's not how I'm going to spend my time. My time is going to be spent being the champion for health and education for the whole state. And I think those are universal challenges that the entire state faces from one end to the other. 
Um, I'm also a, a big proponent of infrastructure. I have a lot of experience helping to create jobs in Oklahoma City. Nearly 100,000 new jobs, 10,000 new businesses while I was the mayor. And because of those experiences of listening to entrepreneurs and job creators, I can assure you as I travel the state and see pockets of the state with, with inferior infrastructure, that if I bring in some outside investor and apply to them, I want you to invest here, and they look down at a crumbling road, they're going to say, well, you haven't invested here. The private sector is not going to lead the way, and the state has a responsibility to take care of the deferred maintenance for two reasons. First of all, it puts people immediately to work, and then secondly, it allows the private sector to create jobs on quality infrastructure. Um, the, the next thing I typically talk about is criminal justice reform, and it seems very ironic. I've never given the speech inside of a correctional facility, um, but one of the sobering statistics beyond the, the high number of people that we incarcerate is that we're spending a hundred million dollars on health care for inmates. And we all know the budgetary problems that we face. And it's the recidivism rate that seems to me like the easiest way to have a significant impact. And that's why I'm so especially uh, emotional when I come in here and see a community and a, and a system that is actually addressing the recidivism rate uh, right at its core. It, you know, it, 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 right now, most people that get out of our prisons go back into our prisons at some point. And if we could just work on the recidivism rate, the numbers would start going down. And the last thing I'll mention uh, is just the overly partisan nature of the, the state capital. I mean, it's, it's urban versus rural, and it's Oklahoma City versus Tulsa, and it's Republicans versus Democrats, and it's Republicans versus Republicans, and it's House versus Senate, and, you know, there seems to be no end to the friction. And I can tell you, after kind of traveling around the state, people are fed up. They want some governing. They want some leadership. And, uh, and I think, you know, I imagine everyone in here knows some, someone in Oklahoma City, and I, I challenge you or ask you to ask them about my willingness to get in there and govern. We have politics, we have campaigns, but when that's over, we govern. And we need some governing in this state. And I think the people of Oklahoma are stepping up and demanding it. And I don't know that I'd be in the race uh, uh, were not the skill set that, that, uh, that seems particularly appropriate at this time. Um, any questions? I know we're going to kind of move in, into the different part of the facility, but um, anything, to, the harder question, the better, probably. So anything you want to say uh, or ask, now's your chance. Okay. Well, thank you all again, Becky. Congratulations on your success, and thanks for allowing me the attempt to, to talk to people. Uh, if you think of a question later, don't hesitate to reach out to me or my campaign. Uh, Jeff, give me my cell number, and it's free to give it out to anybody who needs to call me has a question or wants to tell me something. I have a lot to learn, and uh, I'm trying to listen and learn and then eventually leave, so please help me out. Thanks.